welcome to autoimmunity.in. This is our next episode of Autoimmunity Connects. Autoimmunity.in is a platform where people with autoimmune diseases and their caregivers can connect, share, and inspire each other through true inspiring stories. We thought we'd do something a little different today. And um, we're going to bust some myths on immunity. And we're going to discuss autoimmunity during these corona times. So we have with us again today, Dr. Subrat Arya, who's a rheumatologist and a clinical immunologist at his clinic, Dr. Arya's Care in Delhi, NCR. Hi, Dr. Subrat. Hello. It's good to have you back on our show today. Uh, let me start with a very simple question that a lot of us have. Um, what is the immune system? Okay. So immune system, we have already discussed in previous sessions. I will just uh, tell in brief again. Immune system is like an army of a country which uh, fights against the intruders. For our body, these intruders are bacteria, viruses, and fungi. So this army of, of our immune cells protects us from these invading pathogens or pathological microorganisms. Uh, immune system is not a tangible system like liver or stomach. It is composed of various organs and various cells which circulate in our blood and also they are present in our tissues. So for example, all of us have, have heard of the word tonsils, which are present in our throat. Most of us have had tonsillitis in childhood. So tonsils are one of the immune organs in which immune cells live. And immune cells are also circulating throughout the blood, catching and killing bacteria and viruses and fungi. They also secrete certain chemical agents like antibodies and cytokines, which are soluble in the blood and they they attack and kill these bacteria and viruses. So it is a it is a mix of these molecules, these cells, and these organs which are spread throughout our body. Yes. So that's why it's called a system, and it's because it doesn't depend on a single organ or a single component yes. in the body. There are multiple right. components that are acting together to build an immune system. Yes. So um, as we are here today, we talk about people with autoimmune diseases. Now, uh, what is autoimmunity? Because there is a lot of misunderstanding, you know, as far as what immunity is versus what autoimmunity is. Okay. So let us go back to the, the same example as the army of the country. Uh, suppose due to some reason, some part of this army starts recognizing its own citizens as foreign intruders and starts killing them. And the same analogy happening in our body is autoimmunity. So when the immune system becomes dysfunctional, that is, it is not able to perform its normal function properly, it starts in uh, recognizing our own self, our cells or our proteins as foreign and starts damaging them, then an autoimmunity sets in. And the autoimmune disease is the manifestation of this disease depend on which organ is getting targeted. For example, in rheumatoid, it is the joints predominantly which are affected. And in autoimmune hemolytic anemia, it is the red blood cells. So depending on what cell or tissue is being damaged, there is the name for that autoimmune disease. Right. So this misconception that when, when a person has an autoimmune disease, it is the uh, malfunctioning of, a, of the immune system is correct. But the understanding that the immune system is, is under functioning is not correct. In fact, it is the reverse where the immune system is over functioning or is over aggressive or basically the government has decided that we are going to catch every foreign body without a visa, in, you know, uh, without a visa in the body and we are going to throw them out. That's essentially what's happening. It's great to know this because a lot of people have this severe misunderstanding of what and having an autoimmune disease is, or the fact that, you know, what is autoimmunity? Now that we've cleared that out, uh, does this mean that the more active your immune system is, um, the healthier you're going to be, or, or, um, or is it the absolute reverse? Okay. 
so i would say there is a very fine balance of having a healthy immune system if you have immunodeficiency which is a separate group of diseases in which you are predisposed to repeated infections most of these immunodeficiencies can present in early childhood or early adulthood and on the other hand you have an overactive immune system in which the immune system triggers to very uh, very non threatening stimulus like dust or pollen all of us must have heard about allergic rhinitis right. in which a person who has exposure to dust and keeps on sneezing throughout the day or people who have atopic dermatitis in which they have skin rash by coming in contact with some metal and some uh, some cosmetic so people say they are allergic to that so uh, having a suppressed immune system predisposes you to infections and having an overactive or hypersensitive immune system predisposes to developing hypersensitivity reactions or on the other extreme it could be autoimmunity so you have to have a good healthy immune system which is neither suppressed and nor very overactive so having a overactive immune system doesn't mean you are healthy it may be actually your trigger to a disease right um so if if i am having an overactive immune system or i am having a regular healthy immune system uh does the is this level of immunity or the you know the le- uh, the immunity levels in a person does that sort of change with age yes uh with aging our immune system becomes weaker that is a known fact and there is lot of research which has proved this we have also seen that elderly people are at more risk of developing pneumonias that is why we have elderly vaccination there are elderly people who are more risk of developing herpes zoster many of people would have known that their grandparents might have developed uh, herpes in later in life when they actually had it earlier in life also so with age our immunity weans and when this immunity weans you are uh, at risk of developing diseases by infectious agents and the risk of autoimmune diseases conversely decreases because the immune system is lesser active so having an autoimmune disease which means a overactive immune system the probability of that will go down this you are referring to uh, the beginning of an autoimmune disease but what if a person is already diagnosed with an autoimmune disease what is the uh, understanding with related to age in that okay so yeah many of the diseases usually have a defined natural history in most of the people these autoimmune diseases are lifelong despite their immunity becoming weaker with age doesn't mean that those diseases will completely disappear because that any that integral part of the dysfunctional immune system stays but yeah. yes around 10 to 15% of people may outgrow their autoimmune illness with age but that is very hard to predict at the onset when they have beginning of the immune, autoimmune disease so one should not uh, take as age as a very uh, significant factor in either getting a disease or being cured of a disease um yeah. in as far as autoimmune diseases are concerned yes we are also uh, as as people living with uh, autoimmune diseases we are often told that we should maintain a healthy level of exercise a specific diet you know we should manage our weight better uh, what do you have to say about that okay see exercise and diet are very essential for a healthy lifestyle for anyone but scientifically it has been proven that exercise is good to help your immune system function normally so is a good balanced diet right. if you are malnourished you may be immunosuppressed you may be at increased risk of developing infections but mm-hmm. on the other hand if you are diabetic you are obese your blood sugar levels are higher then it it can be other way around also because that means your immune system may not be wo- working well because obesity also has been seen that you may be at increased risk of developing some infections some studies have also shown that autoimmune diseases are related to obesity like psoriasis so and psoriatic arthritis so i would end up by saying this that regular exercise healthy dieting is very essential to have a healthy immune system it can go anyway it can have a 
predisposing factor for developing an autoimmune disease and it may also be a deterrent for normal function of immune system right um uh, now when we spoke about a healthy diet again so many people want to get into these various kinds of diets that are you know in fashion or in fad uh, and they want to self impose and self diagnose or self monitor these di diets on themselves some of which are you know uh, the paleo diet the keto diet or the vegan diet um how important or significant are these diets in uh, managing your autoimmune disease okay so again i would say there is there is no scientific evidence to show that one particular diet is better or the other particular diet is bad for autoimmune illnesses we just know that we have to take a balanced diet which is <clears throat> a healthy diet if you are diabetic you are taking too much of carbs or too much of sugar your diabetic status will be uncontrolled and you will have a bad immunity that means your normal immune response won't be there because if you have high sugars your immune cells cannot function normally if they cannot function well similarly if you have an autoimmune illness adding certain things in your diet which are known to have anti inflammatory properties may be beneficial so these are antioxidants and omega 3 fatty acids right. and to some extent curcumin which are which is present in our uh, turmeric and lot of other indian spices as well yes. so so what i would say is maintain a good healthy balanced diet with good consumption of uh, these components which are rich in omega 3 fatty acids curcumin and antioxidants so it's not necessary to get into these really expensive to maintain diets uh, i think if we stick to a healthy food pattern and um, fresh foods lots of greens and of course you know just don't do it without getting sort of a medical practitioner or someone who knows their uh, their way around this stuff to tell you what might work better for you if you are living with an autoimmune disease and if you're trying to manage it better uh absolutely this is about you know the physical elements uh in addition to this a lot of us are taking su supplements so you know pills and uh, there are lots of uh, pharma companies and non pharma companies also that promote all these uh, supplements that uh, they claim will boost your immunity or will help you be more immune and this is being discussed at length these days what is your take uh, on this okay so firstly i would address that is it possible to boost the immunity or not and what do we mean by that see suppose if you have an immunity arbitrary figure x so if your diet is not healthy you are obese your lifestyle is lethargic you don't exercise you you do smoking or you consume too much of alcohol your immunity may go down if you are deficient in essential nutrients and minerals your immunity may go down to x minus suppose let's say y so by removing these harmful factors from your life removing smoking alcohol doing good exercise removing lethargic lifestyle and if you are deficient in these nutrients and minerals taking them in may take your immune response or immunity again back to level x but if you are healthy and you have immunity figure x you cannot increase from x to x plus y or x plus z or x plus 4 by taking these supplements so this whole business of selling things in the name of immune boosters is actually not true it may be true for someone who is quite deficient nutritionally in these aspects and replenishment of these factors may help him uh, regain his normal immunity but if you are a healthy person with normal immunity taking these is not going to make it double triple or any number of times of your immunity it will just be your own immunity which was there earlier right so this is a very interesting thing that you brought out uh yeah because we discussed at length offline also about the fact that um building your immunity is a good thing uh to be maintaining it at a healthy level through exercise weight diet management and we discussed this a little earlier that's a good thing but every person is born with a level of immunity and it does not there's really truly no way by eating supplements uh to take it to an extra level that does not exist in your body um 
that's a very interesting and a very relevant myth i think that we've busted today uh, yeah. we've discussed now the, this is all the physical element of what one should do what one should eat how one should manage uh, their illness better there is a great section about uh, psychological stress um being a great being a very huge contributor to uh, having or developing an autoimmune disease a lot of the times our doctors also tend to tell us that we really don't know where you got this autoimmune illness from um but anyone who's been in a highly stressful situation uh, tends to develop this you know how far is this true and 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 how does psychological stress play a role in in autoimmune diseases yeah so uh, as far as having a flare of a known autoimmune disease is there stress has been uh, known to play a important factor we have seen for psoriasis for some other diseases in fact like lupus uh, immense psychological stress or physical stress or mental stress has been known to cause flare up of diseases so taking the graph little backwards uh, maybe it can be said that too much of a stress may be harbinger to develop an autoimmune disease but uh, we don't have too much of uh, scientific data to back this that stress itself can cause onset of the uh, autoimmune illness but yes it can definitely cause flare up of various autoimmune diseases so that is why tackling stress is very very important if a person has autoimmune illness right wow that's another great myth that's busted because there's so much material that um is is available for general reading uh and which tends to lean towards giving you the impression that uh if you have an autoimmune disease you've developed it because you were in a highly stressful situation at some point in time and you know that's what sort of got you there which mm. is not true you have developed an autoimmune disease because you have a certain component in your body that needs to be taken extra care about and it's gotten haywire and you need to fix it and that you can't do on your own you need a medical practitioner to help you through it uh <laughs> now there are so many ways to manage this stress yoga meditation acupressure uh an alternate medicines that are available or alternate lifestyle therapies that are available to help um with an autoimmune disease are these how how far uh, do they go to um sustain a healthy level of your immune system yeah yeah for autoimmune illnesses these uh, yoga meditation they have a very good and important role yoga has been a part of indian culture for for many ages now and the west is realizing its importance now not only yoga the other uh, art forms like tai chi which is from the from the chinese descent yes and other forms of meditation uh, in fact pranayam also they have very important role because all of these have been found to stimulate parasympathetic nervous system which has an anti inflammatory role deep breathing exercise also stimulates parasympathetic nervous system and this stimulation of parasympathetic nervous system has known to play some amount of anti inflammatory role it also releases endorphins in our brain which gives a sense of well being after doing exercise the person with an autoimmune disease or if person has arthritis feels confident that yes he can do and yes. this sense of well being is very important to fight this chronic illness which is autoimmune illnesses so more than uh, the physical element or or rather and equal to the physical element uh, and the contribution of positivity to chemicals in the body the frame of mind of a person also tends to improve because of these chemicals uh, being released in the body and thus it, it helps a person living with an autoimmune illness to be able to manage it better generally life feels better you're able to feel healthier and that's the reason why yoga and meditation is often recommended to people who are living with autoimmune disease uh, right so that's really brilliant some of these things have are relevant some have not been relevant some are uh, what is really relevant today is the corona pandemic or covid as we know it in in you know and what we're living with today as a, a person living with an autoimmune disease 
I am uh, wearing my face mask. I am maintaining social distancing. I am uh, sanitizing myself often enough. I am also ensuring that a um, good level of ventilation is, is there in, in whichever place that I am in. Having done all of this, does this put me at a greater risk of uh, getting, an, uh, getting COVID? Okay. So catching the virus, the coronavirus, uh, maybe it is not related to your autoimmune illness because uh, a person who is not doing these protective measures is anyway at increased risk of catching the virus. If a person is following all these protective measures and that person is at decreased risk of catching the virus. Now, what happens after getting the virus into your system may be different in a normal person as compared to person who has an autoimmune illness. See, when the virus gets into our system, our immune system recognizes it and tries to damage it, tries to kill the virus. Mm. Uh, if I go a little bit in more detail, how coronavirus illness leads to morbidity and mortality, once the virus is there inside our cells, in the, in the lung epithelial cells, it multiplies and it comes out and then it enters more cells and then the cascade continues and it starts infecting more and more cells. When our immune cells come into the lungs, they try to damage those cells which are infected with the coronavirus. Yes. So the, the initial, uh, the stimulus for the immune cells to kill the virus sometimes may go overboard. And these immune cells then start damaging all the uh, cells which are infected with coronavirus or the adjacent cells also due to collateral damage by an immune response. Yes. So most of these patients who are very sick in ICU or on ventilator, they are given immunosuppressive therapies. It may sound little alarming to people that you have a person who is infected with virus and for his treatment, you are giving something to suppress the immunity. So this is the dichotomy or the, 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 uh, the disconnect between the thought that we think that the virus kills. No, the virus infects, the immune system starts killing the cell which are infected with the virus. And in this process, it damages whole lot of cells and causes some collateral damage also, which leads on to the morbidity and mortality. That is why there is role of hydroxychloroquine, steroids, biologicals like tocilizumab, and very few antivirals exist. Most of the treatment are the immunosuppressive ones, not the antivirals ones. Okay. So this is, this, is with, this is the state right now till we get a vaccine. But for autoimmune patient, patient may be on immunosuppressive therapy. So the initial spurt of immune response to control the virus may be inhibited. That is why if a person of autoimmune disease gets the coronavirus, we may have to stop or change the medicines till the symptoms are controlled. So because of this thing, these patients may be uh, at a little higher risk of developing the symptoms or the complications of this coronavirus infection. Right. So um, if I was to understand all this that you discussed in detail, be simply put, if I am a person living with an autoimmune disease. It does not put me at a greater risk of getting the illness. I am at an equal amount of risk like any average other person. And if I, if I, if, if I'm in a situation, I will, with another average person, if the likelihood is the same, that I would attract it or I would not attract it or I would get it or I would not get it. But the huge differentiating factor is, is the aftermath of what happens to a regular person as well as a person who's living with an autoimmune disease. Yes. The immune system is already at an, at an override for a person living with an autoimmune disease. So the response that is, is also at an override of an autoimmune uh, you know, person living with an autoimmune disease and hence puts him at a more uh, sensitive or a more riskier situation to be able to get out of it as much as another person. That's, uh, that's a great thing to understand because a lot of us fear this in our head, you know, that because I am already having an existing uh, uh, immune system problem or autoimmunity, I, I, you know, they are fearing. 
which is which is a great thing to understand the differentiator that uh, in this this whole thing um that also means that if i was to uh, uh, since the, the lockdown is you know um opening up if i was to travel around uh, what is the kind of extra risk that i as a person living with autoimmune diseases uh, would face okay. is it putting me at a greater risk not necessarily yeah i would say avoid all unnecessary travels that is the the most important thing and yeah. it is not for only for yeah, people with autoimmune illnesses it is for everyone uh, even if you have to travel you have to follow all the guidelines given by the local governing authorities wearing a mask maintaining social distance cleaning your hands frequently yeah. now what what i see is when people are traveling and they are meeting and talking to each other they lower the mask considering that there is no audible yeah. so that has to be stopped because when we speak the the droplets which are coming out of our mouth are yeah. much more than we were than when we were breathing mm. i have seen lot of people who keep their mask at this level so their lips are covered but nose is exposed and you are breathing air through your nose so our nose and mouth has to be covered appropriately at all the time with a good fitting mask so i would say avoid all unnecessary travel follow these guidelines of uh, wearing a mask maintaining social distance and good hand hygiene that is what is necessary great it's so good to have uh, you with us over this video call and that brings me to the next question that um, a lot of doctors have today uh, for specifically for people living with autoimmune diseases this has become a boon that we are able to reach out to our doctors and our medical practitioners over video call we were able to take maintenance uh, advice at least by consultations uh, and you know that puts us at a lesser risk of having to be in an environment like a hospital or a, a clinic um, you know where the probability of somebody who's ill if not with corona with something else and uh, you know putting ourselves at a greater risk in whichever manner Uh, this telemedicine has has proved to be a great boon what is your uh, opinion on that yeah i would say we have realized it very late the potential of telemedicine and it took a pandemic for us to realize that yeah. because um i i am not aware about other countries but in india telemedicine was legalized only after this corona pandemic came so it is very very important like for rheumatologist when most of us are concentrated in cities and metros people living in peripheries don't have access to specialized care yes. and lot of people travel from those areas to our uh, setups be it a tertiary care government center or be it a, a multi speciality hospitals mm. so all all these people have to travel sometimes days together to reach to a doctor and then see them if you have seen the patient first time physically then i think the follow up visit can be very well done on a tele consultation if the patient is not developing any new symptoms which need urgent physical attention uh, mm -hmm. to be present physically there so uh, having said that i have felt that this uh, telemedicine is a is a big boon for all of us i have done telemedicine for lot of patients now who have been follow up and not able to see because either they are not able to come or we are not able to go to them uh, in our periphery clinics so it is a it is a it is a big boon definitely wow so here today um we have busted many myths on um immunity autoimmunity certain things that we tend to take uh, uh, from general reading we tend to feel that there it's going to help us manage our autoimmune diseases better dr subara i cannot once again thank you enough for sparing your valuable time to clarify and to bust some important myths for us uh, we hope to see you soon again at, with another session i would like to sign off by saying that uh, don't forget to share like and comment let us know what you uh, want to see in the future uh, at autoimmunity.in and uh, this would help us greatly in in building awareness for people living with autoimmune diseases uh build awareness about autoimmune diseases and in the future also be able to generate some interest 
more, more interest towards these illnesses and you know be able to reach out to more people and give them the great amount of support that they need uh, thank you very much dr subhulathai once again for being with us thanks a lot thank you bye